tuning in in Cane on Air. Dog Talk. All right, all right. So it is good to be here again in the studio. Got special guest Brody Pritchett. He's been one of my lifelong best friends. How's it going, Brody? Good. How are you doing today, uh, Mike? Doing good. Just been training dogs. Yeah, I hear you, man. So Brody, he's been helping me out with dog training for just about ever since I started. I know he was about 12. I was 14. We were working dogs. <laughs> he was breeding dogs and just hunting and all that stuff. So we'll go ahead and let Brody talk a little bit about his history. So yeah, basically just uh, the backstory of me and dogs. Um, <clears throat> I grew up grew up raising dogs. Uh, when I was born, uh, as soon as I, as soon as I was born, uh, my dad gave me a uh, you know a border collie because that's what they were raising at the time, and uh, and he kind of he kind of grew me up and trained me on that. And uh, and uh, when I was about I guess five six years old. Uh, he decided to really get back into rabbit hunting, so uh, we bought us a litter of beagles, and we went, we went, uh, we went raising beagles, and I, I started raising beagles. I fell in love with it, and we did that for a, a long time, and really fell in love with the craft, really fell in love with the the hunting side of things, and uh, just being with the dogs, having something to work with, you know, and uh, just the learning experience that it, it teaches you every day. So uh did that for a long time and uh got, you know, as I began to get older, uh we kind of got out of it a little a little bit and uh but yeah, we just always had dogs around, was always messing with dogs, working with dogs, training dogs and uh pretty much done it my whole life. So. Yeah, man. So with the beagles, so you did it for rabbit hunting. Uh did you do one at a time or kind of explain to me how y'all did the beagles so we would usually train in uh we would train in groups that's how we did our training yeah. um different people do it different ways a lot of people will train beagles a uh, single dog at a time but we uh it always worked for us to, to do them in groups we hunted in groups so why not train them in groups yeah, that was kind of how uh, how we looked at it and it always worked out for us so well we just got in some beagles a few weeks ago well actually last week and we're actually going to start training them for tracking so now i have somebody that's experienced with beagles to help me out with this project so it's i'm new to the beagle world i've only worked with one other beagle most of our stuff is like bloodhounds and german shepherds so this is going to be exciting i know we were training with them earlier and they were toy driven and just wanted to work i mean i'm really pumped about training with them yeah yeah they they really had good drive and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun yeah i'm pretty yeah. excited about these yeah. three you know, yeah i'm they, ready man so I know you wanted to get into dog breeding, and uh, do you have a dog for that? Yeah. So right now, um, right now we're I'm kind of out of the uh, the hunting dog world right now. Um, not saying I will be forever, but you know, just as of right now, I am. But uh, me and my wife, we have a golden doodle at home, and uh, that was kind of the our purpose for her, and. Uh, uh, I love her, you know, but uh, but you know, I want to give her, I want to give her something to do, and you know, I want to be able to, uh, you know, breed with so her. So is she a puppy or? She's she's two right now. Okay. Um, so, so she's at the age where she can actually start having litters. Yeah, she's actually yeah she's uh she's went through a heat cycle already, and uh, just the way life was at the time, we we didn't we weren't able to to get her bred, but um, we're we're at a place in our life right now where we can deal with it and we're ready to start doing it so you're saying like we're about to start doing it so who is we're so i just always <laughs> refer to we're as uh me and my wife hannah gotcha. uh y- you know we uh we we've been married for a couple of years now and uh everything everything i do business wise i just kind of uh automatically include her i'm the same her. way i'm the but, same yeah, way <laughs> it, it'll be me you know but uh no, i was I really just, uh, just kind of getting like all right so he is married uh, letting the listeners know a little bit about you. You are married, and you have yep. how many kids now? I have one son. Yeah, With brand four new. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day, but not right now. So, what's your plans with having kids? You plan on having another one or two? Oh or man, three? I love kids. Yeah, I'd have as many as my wife would let me. But you know how she is, and you know how that's probably gonna go. So yeah, maybe one. You know, two or three. 
but I love kids, man. Well, I just had my second one last week, and it's been a blast. Not getting much sleep right now, <laughs> so that's the only bad thing about having kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Losing sleep, but oh, it's it, it's awesome. It's all so me and Brody, it. we've had a lot of ups and downs over the past few years, like best friends and brothers do. Um, so what's a good way that we get back together, back on top, how we have past few years? One way that we have gotten yeah. back together? Yeah. Oh, man. Like after know. our I don't know, and you know, fights and brothers, you know, that's that's how brothers are. Um, you know, you're always going to come back to family, you know, yeah. and uh, especially when uh, when that uh, whether we're blood family or not, you know, we've just always been family and uh, our love for each other has always been strong. We've just uh, we've had our issues just like everybody else. And, you know, uh, we've grown over the last few years and both have become men with wives and uh you you've got like you said two children you've had one uh well before i did but uh we did a lot of growing and we did a lot of learning and then uh you know i guess we just figured out our quarrels wouldn't really work the uh worth what we were doing to each other so yeah i don't know man it it that's how life is you know um totally you're always gonna you're gonna you're gonna automatically drift apart from people but uh you know those those true friends, those true brothers. You're always going to come back to, no matter what. Yeah, and, I know. After marriage, that really does it to it. And like with everybody, Lauren, she was real close to people from high school, and she's never even said pretty much a word to them since we've been married. So oh, it's yeah. just But now, other people that she's been like was best friends with in high school, now they have kids and they understand. Hey, it's a total different world right, when yeah. you get married. So they're starting to get back together. And of course, we. I mean, we've never been away from each other long (laughs) we've always been doing everything together hunting dog training uh fishing just about anything brothers and best friends do so we were spending time with each other when we (laughs) wasn't necessarily being the best of friends we just always been together you know yeah uh, so i mean that's just life man so brody he is a musician and singer um (laughs) and that's what i do on the side sometimes i pick and grin and sing and so we've done we've been all over we've been in nashville singing and So tell us some about your experience and stuff grew up, with singing. Yeah, man. Uh, grew up in a, a family full of singers. Grew up in church singing. Uh, my dad's a pastor. Um, my sister's uh, an amazing singer and really pr- good singer. Pretty much everybody on my dad's side of the family, you know, uh, in some way, shape, or form, sings or tries to. You know, so I was, uh, I guess, I was uh, three, three, four years old the first time I remember standing on a stage singing Jesus Loves Me into a microphone, you know, and uh, it's just kind of what I've always done. And, you know, after me and you uh, began to came, be, began to become friends, uh, the the wonderful musician that you, you were and still are really oh, motivated no. me to, uh, I guess, put more into that, that art. And uh, it's just something I've always loved. And, uh, um, not nearly as good as I'd like to be, but uh, you know I feel like as as long as uh, you do it the right way and you do it for love, you know, for love of the 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 art and you know to give glory to God through whatever you do, you know, yeah, uh, totally. He's gonna bless you in it. So it's just something that uh, I've always loved. I've tried uh, tried a, a line of different string instruments, you know, through through yes, my you years. Have. <laughs> and, uh, you know, have uh, you mastered any of them? I've mastered zero <laughs> of them. <laughs> oh, you're a stinking good drummer, that's <laughs> but, for sure. Well, I, I not nearly as good as I once was. I feel like, or you know, as good as I. And what to about be. the mandolin? <laughs> I love the mandolin. Yeah, you're you're just, a good chucker. I'm that's just for terrible sure. at you know. Uh, I have a problem Ooh. with uh, patience, so. It's hard yeah. to be good at string instruments when you're not good at patience. It's funny you say something about patience. So me being a dog trainer, I'm constantly having to deal with people every day. And I thought, see, I can't teach people how to play music because it's just I don't have patience for yeah, it. But yet no, I'm training people every day to handle dogs. <laughs> so I don't I don't know. Well, this has been fun. We're going to take a quick break right now. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Gentle Loving Groom, uh, Mr. Twister Storm Shelters, and Paint Rock Creation. So we'll be right back in just a second. All right, 
right, welcome back to MKNF Dog Talk. Uh, again, we're here with my buddy Brody Pritchett. So Brody is actually going to be helping me train some dogs here in the next couple weeks and months and maybe years, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> That's always been a goal of ours to run a business together, and maybe this can be the business we run together yep. is the canine world. Um, so we have some cool stuff in the makings. We both uh, started a search and rescue group. I'm actually the chief of the unit, and Brody is our sergeant of the unit. And so this is a nonprofit group, and, and we've we got quite a few members, maybe about ten members. It's and like we want to do dive, we want to do a mounted unit, we have have just about anything that can fit the needs of a missing person or missing people, really. Right. And around here, you got the walls of Jericho. That's your management area where a lot of hunters go and a lot of hikers go, and that's where a lot of missing people every other week are. So I yeah. mean, so what's your thoughts on the search and rescue group? Oh man, I I mean, um. Yeah, it's still kind of fresh. It's still kind of new. Um, I feel like, you know, what we have done and uh, what we're trying to do is a really good thing. Um, it's a it's a way for us to kind of give back to the communities and surrounding communities, you know, where yeah. we were raised and uh, do something uh, positive. And uh, uh, I know I always have, I believe you always have, you know, have felt like that's an important thing to do. Yeah. And, uh it's, it's really cool because um, we get to incorporate our knowledge with dogs, you know, and yeah. uh, we're getting to learn new trades and tricks, and uh, it's really fun, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to do at the end of the day. You know, it's more, it's more than us just going out there and having a good time. You know, we were both pretty much raised in the woods. You know, we've been in the woods yeah. for, forever. You know, it's just uh, it's what you do around here, but it's, it's more than just having a good time. You know, it's, it's really uh, – really trying to help and uh do something good for you know those that can't really help themselves in those situations so yeah i know we've been to a few searches already in the past year uh, and we've had some good out outcomes with those searches uh i got yeah, called sure. to a place in dekalb county for missing was it an elderly guy or yeah it was a elderly man yeah yes. And they had drones and all that sort of stuff. And I, I deployed my canine, canine Ari, which I've had for seven years. And she was on a track. And right when we were, like, working on the track towards the person, they called and said, hey, he's over here in this yard. And he was just, what, 100 yards away from us? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go to the person because uh, they, they already had an ambulance coming to him. And it was so cold. It was probably in the 20s. Oh, it was and crazy. This, this guy, he didn't have no jacket on or nothing. He was... If we didn't find him within probably the next 30 minutes to an hour, he would have been dead. Yeah. I'm, I'm about yeah, I'm to you that. Yeah. So we got there. The dog sniffed him. We praised him. Brody grabbed Ari. I was able to work on the guy a little bit, try to warm him up. Uh, body heat is one of the quickest ways to warm somebody up. So there was about three of us. We just kind of gathered around him and hugged him and waited on the ambulance to get there. And, I mean, it was a good out, outcome. The guy had to go to the hospital just to get checked out. But as far as I know, he went home that night. Yeah. So that was real good. Yep. I'm sure we've uh, done some other searches, like in Huntsville, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've done one. And that lady was found, too, three days later. Mm-hmm. That was a yeah, interesting that was a wild search. One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they put a reward out for this lady. She was like, hey, this missing. So everybody started saying that they seen her, like 10 miles down the road, 20 miles oh, down the road. So crazy. it was, oh, it was crazy. We was going all over the place. Yeah. Man. And like, we we're police. not getting nothing. Yeah. We're, we, I mean, we at least stop in traffic, you know, because people said they saw her, at, you know, over here, and we'd run over there and try, you know, and it's it's crazy. Yeah, and that, I mean, we should have found that person the first night. Yeah, that it, it was. Luckily, she was still alive. If we wouldn't have found her within the next day, she would have been not alive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it wasn't real cold, but I mean, it was raining. It was just nasty weather. That was a New Year's Eve. Yeah, and so I was there New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and I think the day after New Year's. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a search, rough one. So I and I was out there in in the woods on New Year's Eve, and once twelve o'clock hit for New Year's morning, we were out there searching. All of a sudden, it, I thought I was in the middle of a war because the fireworks were going so crazy. <laughs> I was like, Oh no, we're getting <laughs> shot at! Uh, you never know what kind of search that you're going to go to, and yeah. I, I thought I was in in a war for sure. Yeah. But it was a good outcome. She's alive and well, and we were able to go home. But I want to thank our sponsors. So if it wasn't for our sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do these podcasts and kind of give you all some tips and our history and just talk about dog stuff. 
So Gentle Loving Groom, they're in Scottsboro, Alabama. They they do great grooming. And then you got Mr. Twister Storm Shelters. Um, it's owned by great people as well. They they have good good products. Like once I build a house, I'm totally gonna get a Mr. Twister shelter. Oh yeah, we have. I mean, one. it's it's above ground. Yeah. They go in your bedrooms if you want them, or into your garage where most yeah. people get them. Yeah, they got all kinds. Yep, and Paint Rock Creation, that's owned by Hunter Lindsay. He's a great camera guy, video guy. He does all our videoing for for our dog training show that we're working on. So shout out to all of them. And if you do want to become a sponsor for the show and get shout outs, reach out to me, Micah McCreary. Uh, you can send us an email at micah at mk9f.com or you can call us here at the facility at 256-315-6656. So let's go back to talking about our dog training experience Uh so you helped me when you were young. We're still young, but when we were <laughs> real young, yeah. babes. Yeah. And this is how crazy it was. So we couldn't afford bite suits. We couldn't afford sleeves. We no, had a – so I had a volunteer fire department give me an old turnout suit, which is a fire department suit that goes in fires, if you, don't, if you didn't know that. But <laughs> we took that, and that was used as a bite suit. And Brody was one of the guys that would actually get bit and – that's oh. one of the original, one of the OGs. Go ahead and clap for you, man. Was, everybody give a round of applause. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was crazy, man. I look back at some of those things we did. How did I'm we not like, die? I'm like, like, what was we thinking? Because now when I get bit by these dogs, it hurts through the bite suit. <laughs> yeah. And those are $1,500 suits, yeah, you know? Man, we were just young and dumb, and we didn't care, you no. know, I guess. But <laughs> I don't know, man. It's crazy. I, I look back on it sometimes like, man, what was I thinking? But, I don't know. It made me tough, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Brody is very, very scared of dogs. Terrified. Every time I bring a bite dog out, he's either on top of my truck. Yeah, man. Or sitting on the truck. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Brody, yeah. the dog's not going to attack you until I tell it to. No, just get I mean, yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I have fear of, uh, of getting bit. Okay, here's my whole here's my whole thing on it. <laughs> here's my whole thing on it. So those dogs, I'm not you know I'm not scared that they're gonna attack me because they're being mean, you know. But like once they get into working mode, you don't know. Like you, I don't know. It's just the way my brain works. But like I feel like in my brain, as soon as I take that bot suit off, they're still locked in on me. Whether you say good guy or not, I know they're trained. They're trained not to do that, and Micah does an excellent job at you know training these dogs when to work and when not to. But it's just a, it's a mental block, you know. And I don't know. It's it's I do it. You know, sometimes it it gives everybody else that's around entertainment. I guess. So I can actually hear you now. You actually got in your. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so <laughs> he's he, he's scared of them. Yeah, I can be. Yeah, beagles. Be. You're scared of beagles. I'm not scared of <laughs> beagles. <just> <laughs> no. Bot dogs are. I'm not scared of dogs. I uh, I'm aware of the damage that a good bot dog can do. Brody, you took bites off a turnout <laughs> jacket that I could easily <laughs> bite through myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's what here's here's a, a a crazy story. I guess so. Me and Micah, the first dog that he had ever trained to bite. Uh, like he said uh, earlier, K9 Ari, his dog that he has now. That was the first dog that I reckon that's yep, the first that's dog first you ever one, trained yeah. to, you know, learn to bite. And uh, so where him and his uh, wife, where they used to live, there was this big field out behind their house and woods, and we would do some training out there. And uh, anyways, we was trying to shoot, you know, Micah at the time, we was trying to get his business, you know, actually a business at the time we were pretty much training his dog and you know a few dogs here and there but he was trying to make his business a legitimate business so we were shooting a promotional video and all i had i didn't even have at that that day i didn't even have the jacket on or anything i just had like a little burlap sleeve on my arm (laughs) and uh (laughs) so micro was probably 400 yards away and uh he turned, he turned Ari, you know, he turned her off on me and, uh, his wife, Lauren, oh, she yeah. was, she was set up behind me with a camera oh. and she was videoing all this to make this video. And, uh, the dog, Ari, she came running. And I mean, it was awesome. She came running across this field, jumped this Creek. And when she got to me, she saw Lauren, 
you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, she just jumped towards her like she was playing, and I just grabbed her, you know? But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I think about that time a lot. You know, we didn't know. We were we were new to the game. And, she could have uh, tore my wife Yeah, up. she could have <laughs> ripped her face <laughs> off, man, but. But she didn't, thankfully. Yeah. You know, I had enough sense to, to grab her and get her down. And she didn't, she wasn't, obviously, she wasn't meaning any harm by it. You know, dogs, at the end of the day, they're dogs. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but. Um, and that's the thing about the dogs being trained for bite work. It's a game to them. So you got to keep it fun. If you have a dog that's not toy driven, food driven, you cannot work it hardly. Right. It's, no. it's yeah. so hard. And it, yeah. and it causes stress if they don't want to do it. Um, so, like Ari, she is gun ho. She wants to work. She wants right. to please yeah, me. 100%. You know, she likes that tug. So that's, I mean, that's what it boils down to with the working dog is they want to work. Right. And if they don't want, like, if they don't have a drive, yeah. Find another dog. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but that's one thing Take I give. around the barn. <laughs> no, that's one thing I give, you know, Micah uh, major props about is, you know, training the dogs that he trains is training on, them on the differences between, you know, when they're working and when they're playing, you know, and uh, and they got to play first, you know, and, and then you teach them to work, you know, but he yep. does a really good job at separating their lives and, uh uh, not everybody can do that. So, so I've I've been to a lot of canine schools in the past ten years, and every time I go, there's always that one person that has a dog where you can't even walk by without it wanting to just tear your face right, off. I'm yeah. like, come on now. Yeah. Uh, when I teach my dogs for bite or criminal apprehension, I, I I do a switch in them. I want them to be a dog after you get done working with them. You know, right. I want you to be able to say good guy, and that person can. Pet the dog, you know. I mean, some some people don't don't like you petting their dog, but that's uh, I mean that's okay. But you should be able to walk that dog. Let's say if you have a bite on a job, like if it's a police officer and their dog bites a person, you should be able to take that dog into a courthouse, show that judge, hey, my dog has a switch. It's not right. just going to bite a random person 100%. without me telling it to. Yeah. So that's that's how I roll. That's I mean, th- th- yeah. and that's how I train. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I mean, I see these people. Yeah, like, not everybody Lord. does it that way, and it's like, it's like, get a hold of your dog. Lawsuit. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, hundred percent. It's uh, I don't know. Well, thank you again, Brody, so much for coming out on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. So well, again, we want to thank all of our sponsors. We want to thank our listeners for listening to us, and we got some special guests coming up here real soon. So stay tuned for some more episodes, and we'll see you next time on MKNF Dog Talk. Mm-hmm.